Now let's take a look at how to draw a Stellar's J. So if uh, you are on the East Coast, you have your blue J. We have a J out here that has more blue on it, but it's not called the blue J. Our J here on the, on the West Coast is the Stellar's J. And um, it is uh, a really intelligent bird. So research on bird brains shows us that the corvids um, group that includes jays and crows, um, there are real bird brains. And um, we also, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're also a bird that kind of lets you take a close look at them. Um, the patterns in some places are subtle. Um, and, but what I'm going to try to do is get a drawing of a Stellar's J that feels really kind of solid. I think of them as kind of a, kind of a, a tough bird, a sort of well put together bird that's going to survive in a uh, cold Sierra winter. And um, it's like, click, migrate? No, nah, no, nah, I'm toughing it out. So you wake up on a snowy morning, there's a Stellar's J kind of looking at you, kind of like, yeah, how'd you? Get through the night. You have had a sleeping bag, <laughs> not me. Um, they're really great little birdies, and uh, I want to get a drawing that kind of has a sense of solidity. Um, I want to play with some uh, some angles on on birds, so not just a straight uh, profile. And um, I'll be playing with that. So I'll be demonstrating kind of how I block in the drawing with um, with light lines, and then working the details over that. I'm going to be starting with a colored pencil and uh, for kind of blocking in my basic shape and then putting graphite pencil on top of that. And I'll work up a drawing with some uh, graphite pencil detail. And then on top of that, I'll be putting in some watercolor. And that's my, that's my plan for this rascally Stellar's J. Um, I'm going to be primarily working from photo reference today. And I'm going to be using the website seeingbirds.com. Uh, it's the website by Ashok uh, Kosla and um, wonderful bird photography. And Ashok has given permission for people in this community to use these um, photographs as, as reference for our drawings. You know, some uh, photographers are very like, like uh, no, like, you can't, you don't use my stuff. Um, without royalties. And uh, Ashok um, really encourages it. So thank you, Ashok Kasla. And um, let's go over to, um, I am going to do a screen share. There I go. And <clears throat> So um, are you folks currently looking at um, a picture of a Stellar's J on the left and my piece of paper on the right? Can you see that, Ivea? Yes. All right, so over here on uh, the bird side, um, so this is, this is the Stellar's J, just it's, it's a really cool bird. Um, so there's the blues in here are structural colors. So they're not actually made by pigments. So they uh, will often, kind of glow and, and, and shimmer. Um, you'll see there's a different color here in the secondaries than in the primaries. Here's my primary, or my secondary coverts, the greater coverts going up into here, black hood. Um, in different regions, um, you get um, white spots above the eye on this bird. And in other parts of the United States, there are blue spots here above the eye, these two little eye spots. I never noticed those for the longest time, but they're, they're a Stellar's J thing. So I'm looking around um, at Ashok's photographs and wanting to get a sense of, um, I'm looking for photographs that will have an interesting body angle. See, this head isn't an interesting angle, but it's, because it's looking towards me so much, its beak is going to end up looking fairly short um, if I actually draw the way I'm seeing it. Um, so 
And this body posture here, really side position. This angle here on this bird, I like that on its uh, on, on the angle on its head. It's looking towards me a little bit. I can get more of a sense of the beak. I can see the two here blue um, spots up above its eye. That's looking cool. This wing is looking pretty scruffy. We're like we've had a hard day, right? Um, and so I probably want to, but I like that head angle. And I can put a head angle like that onto a body like this. See, I don't like this head angle quite as much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that head on this body. So that head on this body. And um, let's um, take a look at, at, at how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start over here. And... So I very often will start a drawing just by looking at what is the angle behind, behind the, the, the back of this bird. Actually, if I put my bird back here, then my bird will be over here. It'll be off center. I'm going to put my bird back further here. So if I were to pat this bird, I would have something roughly at this angle. I'm intentionally drawing really lightly here. So if you're thinking, wait, there's something wrong with my screen. I can't see that line very well. Nope, I'm just drawing lightly because these, these original lines are intentionally really, really light. So this bird is going to have a head that is going to roughly go in this area here. And let's take a look at the negative shape in front of its throat coming out onto its chest. Get that area there. And that is going to, um, this line on the back and this line going on the front, that is then gonna help me kind of capture a ball, of an oval of a body that is going to fit into here. This bird's beak, is actually, I'm, I'm not going to have this head. I'm going to have the other head on this. I was about to get just uh, carried away and uh, draw the other head. So I'll come back and put more head detail in, in later. Um, let's get our wing in here. So take a look. Uh, if you can see the uh, on the photograph where my cursor is, this little point right here, that's where the bird's wrist is. And I want to, I like to sort of look at how far that is from the back, how far is that from the front, and how far down this way is that. Um, I want to kind of place that point somewhere in here. And then I'm going to just for now, I'm just going to lightly just sort of put a little oval placeholder saying I'm going to have a big wing in this area. Let's make sure I have enough room for my the back feathers. There's this dark mantle on the top of the bird here. Then there would be covert feathers. And then, yeah, that's going to work. But this wing, I'm going to start it closer to the front there. Um, the secondary feathers on this bird are doing something cool. This wing, I see these are my secondary feathers here. They're partially covered by the secondary feathers on the far side of the bird. So you'll often see um, the feathers from the other side flipping over to your side or your side flipping over to the other side. So they cross over in the back. And so we see these secondary feathers kind of coming over here in a pile. These are the primary feathers down here. Everything up here is secondary. So secondaries in here to here. These are primary sticking down here. So those are all secondary feathers. See this little dark blue tone line there? That's secondary feathers coming in here all the way to there. Those are my secondary feathers. So you can actually see very clearly where the primary feathers with the light cyan here and the uh, secondary feathers with this dark blue up here. And then my tertial feathers, 
this one, two, three feathers, these three feathers on top, they're cyan again with these little stripes on them. Tertial feathers are part of your, uh, are part of your secondary feathers. So I'm going to have, um, I'm thinking that the wing is gonna come down about this far. I'm going to have this far wing flipping over in this area here, this wing tucking up underneath. Secondary feathers coming in here. And then primary feathers drooping down here a little bit on the far side here. I'm also seeing primary feathers sticking down there. Let's take a look at where the breast feathers here come in relative to this wing. At this angle, it's about at the tip of those secondaries. So here I had my secondaries coming in here. That means these are going to come in like that. Does that make my bird look a little bit too stretched out? No, that's working for me. Again, all these initial lines, intentionally keeping them really, really light. You're not going to really see these in the final drawing. Um, our tail is tucking from up in here and is coming fairly straight down. And so now I'm gonna look at what is the length of the tail relative to the body. I gave this a little bit of a short tail. I'll lengthen that tail a little bit. It's easy to change proportions at the start of a drawing, but difficult to change proportions as you go further on. Some undertail coverts poking in down here. And I see a leg starting from in here. And it's going to come here on the branch. There's another one that is going to be in here on the branch. Put my feet in first, then the branch. Now I'm going to take a closer look at that head. This is the one with the head that I like. I'm going to take this head and put it on this bird. It's kind of hunkered in. Um, so from the back here, this is coming up a little bit steeper. Um, there's a little Wrote in here, it'll be tucked in. My beak is going to be, the center line of this bird's head is right in here. So it's looking in this direction. So I see how I'm lightly drawing in that center line. Where those cross, that's where the beak is going to attach. And from there, it's going to stick out here a little bit. So I want to think of three-dimensionally how that beak is going to fit into the head. Now some negative shapes. This side comes up and then out at an angle here. The center line of this kind of goes to a high point up here. Some big feathers sticking up here. And then there's the back of my bird. All right. Now I'm going to just look at my, my little framework here for a minute longer and think to myself, um, are these proportions working? Um, Is a head that size going to work on a body that size? Things 
for characteristics like beaks and feet, eyes, details that you're really drawn to, we have a tendency to sketch those in too large. So people have a tendency to make a head that's too big. So I'm going to just double check and see, yeah, I actually made my head a little bit too big, huh? even though I was aware of that tendency. So I'm going to kind of trim this in a little bit. And did I make my beak too big? Yes, I made my beak too big. Huh. So if I check to say, did I get it right? I have a tendency to say to myself, oh yes, I got it right, right? Um, if I instead check to see, did I make my head too big? I've got a chance then of catching that. And I need to get my eye, where's my eye in relationship to the end of this beak? The eye is sitting right here in the head. And maybe that eye wants to be slightly larger. I tend to make my eyes too big. So I'm trying to intentionally look for, am I making my eye too big? This distance here from the edge of the eye to the front of the beak, really important distance to look at. That's called the lores, L-O-R-E-S. And um, if that distance is wrong, the bird is not going to really feel like the bird. All right, at this point, if I do more with this blue pencil, then I am going to overwork this, these, li these lines that um, nobody's ever going to really see. So at this point, I think I'm, I feel comfortable putting my blue pencil down. And I'm going to switch over to a mechanical pencil. This is a 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil. Um, and I'm going to now just start drawing from this. I'm trying to kind of get this part of my bird to look back at me. Um, I'm going to do one other thing. Hold on a moment. Walking across the room. getting a piece of paper out from the printer. And I'm gonna put this piece of paper down right here across my bird. That way I can have my hand on this and draw here without getting all the oils and stuff from my hand transferred to the paper. Um, if you've got dirty hands or there are oils on your hands, it's gonna change the way your paper responds to paint later on. So a lot of illustrators will well, some sort will even wear a little white glove. Another way of doing that is I'm going to put this down here so that I can work on this part without uh, messing up that part of the drawing. It's going to be especially important later on after I've got graphite across this. If I've got my hand on my bird, I'm going to be smudging my bird as I'm drawing other places. So this little uh, pull out a little piece of paper trick is going to help. All right, let's draw with pencil now. Um, these birds have a little area of, let's zoom down on this a little bit, zoom down. Um, focus. There we are. Um, so there are so a few little bristles that the jays have over their nostrils. So you can't really see the nostrils very often on corvids. Um, this top mandible is going to come down a nice little curve. And uh, then I'm going to pick that up here and bring it into the underside of the head here. The corner of the mouth, we're seeing. I come up this way. And looks like this whole underside is going to be nicely in shadow. So I'm just going to, uh, for now, put some light lines in to remind me to kind of shadow that in. <clears throat> up here on the forehead, I have the blue line. I haven't actually decided whether I'm going to make this the kind that has blue or the kind that has white. 
Um, so I'm going to just leave, I'm going to start with it white, and I may decide to paint it blue later on. those words in here. My bird's forehead is going to kind of come up in here. And I think I want this to come down a little bit further. So my bird's lures L-O-R-E-S, are in this area here. And you notice in this bird, there's just sort of some really nice kind of dark in there. So that will be an area that will be just dark until I get to the eye. I'll put a nice crisp line around that eye. Little indication of feathers underneath the eye, kind of giving it I'm a, a sort of a sleepy bird look. And kind of around here too. See that hint of that on the, the photograph there. Now I'm going to go up here in this crest. Here's a little clump of feathers. I'm going to make it feathery by putting a few little bill berry marks tweak, tweak, into that. On this edge, actually, I'm going to start more kind of on the center line. I'm going to go up to this feather here on the top. And I have that. I want that feather to really kind of shine here. It has a few. friends out there. And here's the back of my bird's head. It's nape. I'm gonna put a little bit of a curve and a bulge, more of a bulge towards the base of that. Now this bird has a malar area. So that's the area kind of underneath the, the beak that is going to come down here. Defining part of its chin. If you look right in here, there's a little kind of groove. It's part of our malar. And then I'm going to have a little bit of a throat. And I'm going to think of this throat as kind of wrapping around a curved bird surface here. Getting a little bit fuzzy on that focus. That's better. Um, let me see if I can lock the focus. Um, I know there is a place for me to do that. I manual focus. Oops, manual. There we are. So now it should stay focused on the paper, even if I have my hand up here. That that paper should still be in focus. All right, um, here's the bottom of my ear patch. Tucking in here. And this this feels just a little bit too, you know, flamey up here. I think I, I, I want, yeah, look at the distance between the back of the eye and the back of my head on my bird and that bird up there, that bird has much more back of the head. And so um, I think that's, that's one.
thing I can do to kind of improve this bird. What if that came out more like that? No, I like that better. Yeah. Before it was just looking like this narrow head with a flame on top of it, and that wasn't feeling very Stellar's Jay. All right. Now let's drop down the body here. I'm going to go back to that other photograph. Here I borrow this bird's head, and I'm going to borrow this bird's body. Um, so this bird is looking down a lot more. Um, come out here on the front of the chest, give it a little bit of a chesty look, and then I'm going to come down here. And notice how on the bottom of these feathers here, here smaller feathers, but these look really kind of, well, feathery, right? So this part down here on my bird, I'm going to make those lines longer and more feathery. Um, so. Give Birdie some back here. And I can now come down onto the top of this, the sort of the, the, the mantle and sort of scapular area in here. Can I see sort of any hint of a little bit? Yeah, there's so this bird has scapular feathers in here, it's got back feathers up here, it's sort of same color. I'm not really seeing a strong wrinkle up there. Sometimes you will sort of see a little bit of a bump there where those scapulars come in. Um, the front part of these breast feathers are covering up this top corner of the wing. See this little line right here of feathers? Deep, 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 deep. So that means right in here, there's a little place where These feathers here are covering up the front edge of the wing. Now, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a zone down here um, of greater covert feathers. Those are above the secondary feathers of the wing. And I like this sort of uneven edge that they have. There are feathers that are kind of coming straight down across this whole thing. You see a little hint of those. But notice how faint these little lines going in this axis are. If I get in here and I draw in a whole bunch of lines kind of going jump, 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 jump. Here's where all these feathers are. This part here will start to look like a little grid and will look a little bit less like what we're actually seeing on this bird. What about my tertial feathers? Here's feather number one, here's feather number two, here's feather number three. One, two, three feathers getting progressively longer from the back. So here's feather number one, that's tertial number one. Here's tertial number two, here's tertial number three, right in there. It's amazing on this site being able to kind of zoom in and see that, that, that detail. So, <clears throat> What do I have then? 
I have from somewhere in here, these are my primary coverts. My secondaries are going to come down from that, and my tertials are going to wrap around the back here. So tertial number one, tertial, then I step out this way a little bit and come down here for tertial number two, which is going to come further down than I would expect. I'm going to put a little notch in it here so it feels a little bit more feathery. And tertial number three is right next to that, and it's going to go all the way down here. Flipping around from the other side, at this same height, I have the um, the tertials from the other side. Again, the tertial feathers are these three feathers that um, cover up the top part of the wing, or the top part, the, 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 the top secondaries. One, two, three, you see them all kind of piling down. Uh, this other one coming in here. And then there is a little wedge of primaries sticking out underneath that. Now in here, there are secondary feathers coming all the way down, down, down here. But I'm just going to put in a few little, instead of a, a big grid of parallel lines, I'm going to just suggest that there are Feathers going this way. And now here, this whole part here, including this across this color change, those are all primary feathers. There is a change in the angle of uh, the outside leading edge of the feather right in this part on each of these feathers that gives and the, the 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 upper part is cyan the lower part is more of a gray and that gives you this kind of color change in here so um i'm going to sort of lightly indicate where that color change is going sort of in this area, and then you have feathers, primary feather tips that we're seeing here. And the website that I'm looking at is um, seeingbirds.com. Another big favorite of mine is birdpixel.com. Today I'm using seeing birds though. All right, now my little friend is ready for its tail. Um, I There is a feather edge that is coming right in here like this. Notice that it's subtle. So if I draw in all of the feather edges, I'm going to get all these lines coming down this way, and it's not going to look like my J tail. Instead, I am going to um, just suggest that I have one kind of feather kind of coming up in here, others tucking up behind that, 
Now, as you can see, a little bit of the upper tail coverts coming down in here and my undertail coverts in here. So here is You're seeing the shaft of the central feather on this one, kind of making a prominent, prominent line down there. And there's a few upper tail covert feathers and a nice little pad of undertail covert feathers that tucks right into there. Now we just need some feet. Large, sturdy, strong feet on this. Notice again, I'm still using this to block my hand. I think I want to fluff the tummy out here a little bit. And what are we going to do? We're going to come from somewhere right up in here. We're going to come down bold and strong, getting slightly thicker towards the base here. There are scales going up that leg, but they're hard to see. If I draw, you get in here and draw all the scales that I know should be in here, it's going to look like some sort of pine cone. But towards the bottom here, there's some really kind of prominent wrinkles. And we have lines that are coming out and down. And then we're seeing the back toe. All right. So I'm drawing in the back toe. It comes straight out because that's all one bone in there. It doesn't wrap around the branch. And the back part of it has some big scales on it. And also, you see right in here in this part, there's a little kind of dewlap of skin that kind of pop right where this nail comes in. Big nail, right? Um, where this nail comes in, there's this sort of uh, hook of tissue that kind of comes down in here. So this is going to. branch come across here and I'm going to draw in hanging down on the other side you just see a few of the kind of the, the claws perhaps the tips of the claws from some of those other toes <clears throat> on the other side I'm just going to have suggestion that there is a foot happening in here. And um, on this photograph, you can't, oh, can you see the claw? Yes, you can. Uh, claw is going to be. There we are. I'll get into my branch uh, details a little bit later. Uh, for now, this will this will work. So let's zoom. There it is. There's my sort of my my frame up for this bird. Now, what I'm going to do is paint it. I'm going to be using watercolor paint. 
And I'm going to start with a, uh, I'm going to start with a coat of sort of the, the, the shadows that are on this bird. So I'm going to imagine, um, now I'm going to sort of leave the lighting um, that is in the photographs and kind of invent my own lighting for this bird. Um, actually, before I do, I want to take a closer look at it. Have I made the eye too big? Have I made the eye too big? I think I have. Let's just look back at that other one again. Yeah, yeah, my eye is too big. Uh, I, I tend to, you know, I think that the bird eyes are beautiful. And so I will tend to overdo that. I'm glad I sort of stopped and checked. So I'm going to get in here and erase out that little eye. And come back in a slightly smaller eye. That will make the bird look a little bit larger. Because um, big birds have proportionately smaller eyes. The size of the eye in the head of a chickadee um, you know, feels, feels really, really big. That guy used to have, this bird used to have kind of a chickadee style eye. So I'm going to imagine that the sunlight is coming from this direction, on this side. So and up above. So that means this side of the head here, part of the back down here, underneath here, part of the belly here. These parts are going to be cast in shadow. And I am going to use a shadow color. It's sort of a purplish gray mixture. This is, um, so this color that I've got here, you notice it's sort of, it's a purpley gray. Right now it's a little bit too intense, um, but actually on that head, I want it to be, because that head is gonna be dark. So I can kind of get away with putting in some dark shadows in here. First, I'm putting some paint over those, those lines and features that I put in. And then I will be covering those up with another coat of paint. This just sort of allows me to, to, to kind of keep, the, 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 uh, keep these, these, these features. Um, and now I'm getting rid of a little bit of the paint on my brush. And here is, here are the shadows. I want to strengthen that a little bit. some of that, that head shadow going up. I'm going to put a little bit of kind of shadow coming up into this part, um, a little bit of shadow kind of coming up in here. Now, as the body kind of turns down this way, we're going to get these parts here also in shadow. And I'm making these little shadow marks in the same direction as the feathers are, 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 are laying. So if any of these show up in my drawing, 
then it's not going to feel like some weird harsh line. It's going to feel like, you know, some texture in those feathers. So here along the top of this, And then that shadow would be casting down from that wing. Far foot gets to be pretty dark too. I used to put just uh, the shadows in more towards the end, but then they always kind of felt like an afterthought. And sometimes when I would put them in, it would mess up all these other details that I had put in. So now I really like putting in the shadow towards the start of the drawing. All right, my birdie has a shadow. Um, now I'm going to put on top of this local color. Local color means cyan in here, blue in here, blue in here, cyan in here, cyan in here. So you're just sort of color matching. But I'm going to put that on top of this 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 thing that has those 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 shadows put in. We want a little bit more of a, yeah, I like that better. Maybe this gets a little bit of a shadow drop there. So I'm gonna now put these, um, the local color in on top of this, these, these shadows. Because I've been using my paint rather lightly, you don't have, um, you're not seeing a big, um, any big puddles of paint here, so I don't really have to wait. I'm going to start with lighter values and work my way towards darker values. So I'm going to start with some of these light cyans and just place them in. Um, on my wing here, I'm going to use a little bit for that light cyan, some manganese blue hue. It's a Daniel Smith color. And it gets to go in there. Where else am I seeing my cyan? Maybe in here. And I'm seeing some cyan in here. side. All right. I'm going to pull a little bit of a light gray into this while it's still damp. Give me kind of a soft edge on that side. Um, now, what about that belly color? Um, slightly grayish blue. And I'm just painting right over those shadows. Now I'm going to get a, um, a stronger blue. And I like to um, 
I like to test colors both um, on my palette and also just on the piece of paper so I know what I'm getting before it hits my bird. Um, there's blue. I'm going to put some. blue in here. A little bit in the primary coverts. And the tail. Painting right over those shadows that are now dry. Oh, Jack, would you um, slide your page just a teeny? Thank you. Ah, there we go. Thanks. The blues that I'm seeing in the wing are not quite matching what I'm seeing on the paper. So I'm going to add a coat of light blue over these tertials. And Darken those just a little bit more. With watercolor, you can put on layers of paint to build up to a, a stronger, stronger value. Um, on the head here. I'm going to use a little bit of brown, uh, sort of a dark brown, the head and the back get a sort of warm chocolatey brown that is going to kind of go to dark in some places. A great color for that is Daniel Smith's Bloodstone Genuine. So I'm reaching for some of my Bloodstone here. See, it's this, this is actually, a, it's a, that's a brown, but it's it sort of reads very black, but you'll see kind of warm, warm bits of it. <clears throat> I'm going to start in the shadowy part of the face here. This, so I can put my hand on my paper. Oh, we're off the page. <laughs> I caught myself that time. Aren't you proud of me? Oh boy, it's just covering everybody. Ah, my shadow is disappearing. Put in some little shadow marks in here. And now I'm going to get rid of some of the paint on my brush. That just gives me a lighter value of the same color. Don't want that little dark edge to be quite as strong. Okay. 
I think I want that to be a little bit more of a warm brown. So I'm going to put a layer of brown into that, to some of these areas that are getting light. On the beak here, I want this beak to look shiny. Um, so part of what is going to allow me to do that is to have a dark contrasting shadow area. And I'm going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to put in some dark in the eye. So kind of a pale highlight in the top of this bird's eye. I need to resharpen my brush. So it's noticing that the tip of my brush was a little bit frayed. And for doing an eye, I needed it to be a little bit more precise. So I just rolled the tip of it on the paper. Notice that the, the little pale area around the dark eye, um, there's feathers that sort of stick up a little bit along that edge. And uh, that is going to, uh, so if I kind of give it a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, light ring around it um, that that can feel very bird-ish. Um, now the top part of the bill here, a little bit of color into that. So notice at this point that when I look out here at the wings and the body of this, you, you can really sort of see these sections where I painted this, I painted this, I painted this, I painted this. And it looks like kind of this calico thing. It's not feeling unified. Um, to unify this bird and make those feathers feel like they're all kind of part of the same plumage, a wash is going to be very helpful. So a, a wash is where I'm going to take a light color of paint and I'm going to paint it across the entire thing. And that's going to make these parts feel not as separate because there actually will be some of the same colors bouncing back from those. Overall, also my bird feels a little bit too light value. So I'm going to um, mix up a light bluish wash here. And what I'm gonna do is just put it all across this blue area. I'm gonna start here at the back, because if I don't like it and I'm starting there at the back, I still have, I've got more of a time to change it rather than if I started that in here. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna lighten that value a little bit. 
Okay, now I'm just going to paint this across the entire thing. See that pulled that together a little bit. So wash can, if things are feeling a little bit too patchy, um, the, the wash can really be your friend. I'm gonna bring some of that same color into the tail, just darken that a little bit. I squint at my bird. I look back at the eyes and like, oh, what do you need? Uh, what is sort of jumping out too much? I think I'm gonna bring some of this color up into here a little bit more. Okay, what else do I wanna do? Um, I'm gonna squint at my bird. And this, this color doesn't seem quite right. That's, what if there is a brighter, And I'm going to darken up my back with just a little bit more Bloodstone Genuine. So at the end, I'm putting washes across areas, unifying things. I don't think I've ever really kind of pointed that approach out in a class, but it is a, it's a really useful strategy for making a uh, parts of a thing feel like they're same, part of the same whole, because you really are putting those colors across the, the whole beastie. And now I'm gonna let that dry. Just about done with my bird here. Well, I haven't done much on the legs, but I'll speed up my drawing process. There it goes. Now, um, I think there's a little bit more kind of value to, ah, yeah, before I put in this next step, I do want just to get a little bit more of this going. Pull that together. All right. Now, one last dry, and then I'll show you what we do with details. I have a two-step approach for putting in details. And um, so the details are like those little bars that go across. Um, little, and this, this step is really fun to do. And so people will often do it too soon in a drawing. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of bluish black here. And I'm going to fray the tip of my brush like that. So that when I make marks, I'm going to test my marks. I get this sort of irregular pattern like that. And let's see, I'm kind of coming down here, one, two, three, four stripes. In the top part of this. And
if you put the these on at the start earlier on you wouldn't be really be able to do any washes without these turning into just mud on your page. Um, but because I did it a little bit later, I'm able to get those little stripies in on my wig. There's also stripies on the tail. And look at how they curve. Okay, so test what kind of marks my brush is making. Um, and how many I've, I've got one, two, three, then four, five. Um, where else do I have some dark details? I have a little bit of dark details around the bottom edge of, oops, that's way too dark, of these um, primary coverts. So I put in a little dark in there. Um, how about some hints of greater darkness in some of these primaries. That is a little bit more than I bargained for. So what I'm gonna do is clean my brush and just come with a damp brush and lightly stroke the tips of those a little bit and then push them back. Whoops, you're not seeing that. Well, I really needed to make that whole tail darker, didn't I? I should have a darker blue on that tail, but I don't. Now that I've got these in, it's gonna be much more challenging. So it's good to notice that I need to have my tail darker before I get my details in. What I'm gonna to try to do is just kind of come down here and be fast and not scrub on those any. There we are. What about a little bit of hinting of some wingy details in here. How about a little very faint hint of some bars going across here? Just subtle. Want a little bit of darker up in here. And my dark part of my detailing is almost done. Or I should say is done. And now comes the second part of the detail. And for this, I'm going to use this barrel Prismacolor white colored pencil. First, I'm going to get it a little bit sharper. And for this to work, my J friend should be really nice and dry.
right? And warm. Now, um, when I hit the page with this, I'm going to get little white streaks on top of this. And this will give me a lot more detail. And it's fun to do. That's the, one of the dangers of it. So this part is fun to do. And so I often really overdo it. So I have to kind of get myself to like, oh, just, just do a little bit with this. And then please, Jack, stop. So a little hint of some tail edges where when you're putting this in, imagine that you are light. Your light glinting off of parts of the plumage here. Where are you going to where are you going to shine? And it is also um, fantastic for fluffing up something. See how this could be just like a hard coat of plastic, right? But if I have just a few of these little streaks in it like this, that then you start to sort of see that as, as fluff. So it's the, the Fluff Master 3000. Look here on the belly. See, that's like the smooth thing. Not fluffy, not fluffy. Let's put a little bit of the Fluff Master 3000 into it. Here we are just a little bit up here and a little bit down here. And we fluffed it out. I'm going to put a few little highlights. Actually, oh, what I'm going to do on the on the legs, I'm going to I'm going to go make these 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 highlights really bright and sharp with a gel pen. See, that's a Signo uh, Uniball gel pen. And I'm able to go like highlight, highlight, and now it looks shiny. Let's put a little bit of a signal highlight up there on that beak. <clears throat> and that is a Stellar's J. I'm really glad I made its eye smaller. That was a good call. So that's kind of a walk through the process that um, I uh, that I, I usually use when I am. Oh, I, now I'm looking at, at the 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 comments now that have emerged from this, and somebody said. Uh, Peggy was saying, is the body too small? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, that's right, Peggy. Uh, Peggy noticed, like, you know, that body just looks a little bit too small for me. You know why? Because it was. Right. As a Stellar's J with a big old head, right? But, you know, in spite of me knowing that I tend to make heads too large, I made my head too large. So, um, I can, I will try to, uh, a little bit later, maybe try to fluff this thing out, kind of punch it out a little bit, and maybe I can get a little bit more volume into my thing. At the end of a drawing, there's usually not very much that you can do. Those are great things to catch early on. Um, but if you don't, you know, um, that's just a great lesson for the next time you draw one, right? Um, it's don't kind of give up the whole idea of like making the perfect picture. 
every drawing is a learning tool for the next drawing, for the next drawing, for the next drawing. If there's no masterpiece. There's no end of the line. There's just kind of our continuing movement towards kind of getting better at this process and rinse and repeat. And we'll get better and we'll get better and we'll get better. The, uh, I, as a uh, person once said, like, you know, my gravestone will be my diploma, you know, the, and, and, and let yourself just put in, um, there isn't, yeah, there isn't an end of the line. Um, and I hope that this was fun and helpful. Thank you so much for playing with me today. Um, I'm going to pop over to my gallery. If anybody has thoughts, comments, ideas, or something that you wanted to share, please do. I'm going to start by bouncing over to London with our friend Ray Bonto, and then we're going to go see Mary Lynn and then Heidi. So Ray Bonto, Mary Lynn, and then Heidi. And uh, Ray Bonto, you are live and you can unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah. Oh. So Let me remove my spotlight. There we go. Oh, nice, nice. See, the, yeah, you've got those bright colors in the wing and different than the sort of more subtle blue on the chest. I like the way that the shadows are working on the side of the head. Um, this is, this is really working for me. The, uh, and you've yet to meet your first Stellar's Jay, right? Yeah. So, um, when you come to the States here, um, uh, we will go burning together and find a Stellar's Jay. Sound like a plan? Yep. All right. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, also, you hold that back up again, what, the, the solar jay a little bit closer. You know, I, I get a sense of volume and light on this. I really, um, I really kind of get the, I, I, I like the, the way your, your, your shadows and those highlights are working on our bird. Excellent. What else do you have there? So... I went to the pigeons. Oh, good. Our pigeon friends. Um, <clears throat> um, they started flocking as soon as I went there. Um, so. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, such great angles on these. I see those, these, these males all puffing themselves out and displaying for you. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, you really sort of see the time that you've put in observing, observing pigeons. And that downward head angle is interesting, isn't it? When they kind of hold their beak on their chest. Yeah, this is a new breed, um, which has like a white eye patch, so. Oh, interesting. And you had not seen those before? No. Oh, this is this is really good observation. Really good and observation. Then, Everybody look at uh, Ray Bonto's line variation also and the energy in these lines. So just look along the back of the head, there's a punched in line. And then you go on the back and notice how Ray Bonto has that line going from, it's a heavier line and then it goes into a lighter line and then you get back to where the wings are and we're gonna punch in a darker line. That line variation, it, it just sort of feels like that light area kind of lets sunlight into the back of this bird. If that was a hard, heavy line all the way around, it would be much less of an interesting drawing. So nice work on your line variation too. Thank you. I saw a dead slug. Um... I mean, I nearly sat on it. Uh -huh. um, I mean, it was, there's this like um, wall which you can sit on very low, mm -hmm. which is meant for sitting on, made out of rock. 
and in a in a crack there was this slug i was sitting right over it oh interesting so and is it a spotted slug yep that's really cool uh, we don't ours don't have spots here i found a crazy brown slug that looked like a leaf in ecuador um just sort of makes me kind of wonder about slugs worldwide when you come out here also i will introduce you to the banana slug which is a, a crazy super cute slug that um that, that, that we have uh in our forests here in our redwood forests oh this that 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 pigeon really really feels pigeony we need a sketch oh. arpan this is really exciting. Really, really exciting. It does look different parts of the bird and not together, but yeah. The, uh, but also your, your understanding of, of uh, this, I, I can feel the anatomy in this wing. I, I, I really like uh, that. And yeah, and also some, some unifying washes would just pull that right together if you choose to do that, or you can leave it as, as a toned uh, a tone sketch. Mm. I like the way also you're handling those shadows on the, the head of the bird. Really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. Now, I am going to bring up um, uh, Mary Lynn. You, you were up next, I believe, and then we'll jump bounce over to Heidi. Is that right? Yeah, so I'm going to add you in on Spotlight and you'll be able to enter, uh, to unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. I, you have to, um, I, I messed up. Um, now try again. There we go. All right. I love Stellar Jays. They're one of my favorite in my backyard because they're, I call them the Jay with attitude. <laughs> the the yes. Jay with the Mohawk. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, this one really feels unified. See, this 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 bird's feathers feel like it is the plumage of of a bird. This this it feels solid. I like it, and that little bit of highlight on the head and the back. I realize I do want to use my paper for sample testing rather than because it's like I really like my uh, my little sample paper. It's like why didn't I do that right on the. Yeah, right Ray here. Bonto style. Notice how Ray Bonto had all those, yeah. all those little tests yeah. boom, 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 all over there. Yeah, I love theirs. And I love you their. What you could do is you could glue that into the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Just like here's that. part of my process. Yeah. Actually, though, it's got two sides. <laughs> Some oh, of it's fun. from a previous thing, but I got lots of, lots of samples. But yeah, I'd, kind of, I'd like to do that and then write notes. It looks kind of lonely there by itself. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's really fun. That's really fun. Yeah, I, I love these birds. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're awesome. awesome. Cheeky little <laughs> birds with attitude. Yeah, I, I put a Stellar's Jay on the cover of the second printing of Sierra Birds. And um, I actually, somebody sent me uh, uh, one of the more strongly worded emails that I've received. This was a person who really didn't like jays because they huh. eat other, uh, they, they can eat the, the, the nestlings of other birds. And this person was, uh, was, was incensed that there was that bird on the cover. And, uh, but I agree, corvids are just so much fun. The best. They're so cool. Yeah, I love them. Thank you. And, and again, also just sort of look, look, and folks notice how kind of unified the, the plumage of this bird feels. It sort of feels like these are really kind of feathers on this, this beastie. This is great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And now, um, I said that I would go to who is who is up next? I'm, my brain is forgetting. I think it was Heidi, but I can't see her. 
I don't see Heidi either. She might have had to bounce. In which case, um, let's go to Kate and then to Tracy and see what's happening in your journals. Spotlight for everyone. Um, hi there, Kate. We're going to allow you to unmute in just a moment. Hold on a second. Why can't I find my little ellipsis to allow you to unmute? It's not your fault. It's it, This is right now an operator error on our part. I'm going to actually, I'm going to have to remove you a spot. Oh, no, wait, here I go. Here I go. Uh, and now you can unmute. Now you can unmute. And I'm going to spotlight you. There you are. Is it working? We are working. Oh, perfect. Okay, so this one got a little messy, and then I ended up just finishing it off with my black pen, which I'd thrown out of my art kit for a while because I relied on it too much, and I made the mistake of bringing it to California with me, and I think I just need to start leaving it home again because <laughs> it's it's a little bit dangerous. Um, oh, no, it, but, it, but it works for you, and also it, it, um, it, it, it helps you, it, it, it forces you to be decisive to to make decisions and very often just the combination of watercolor washes which often have just this this fluidity to them and the precision of ink lines those two go together so well that's really fun to see yeah i've got some other stuff i've almost filled up this notebook uh, oh let's see yeah i've been doing a lot of stuff uh <sighs> there's wild turkeys behind our house <sighs> Uh, the Kestrels up on Fremont's Peak. Oh, so tell me about your process of sketching the turkeys. Those turkeys have such the feeling of turkeys. Yeah. Um, um, and even that one three-quarter view from the rear head down. Yeah. So that's, some, that's a sketch that only somebody who is looking at real turkeys could make. Yeah, well, some of these um, were from life. I was really... I had a really funny experience yesterday. I was walking with my sister and our cat and um, the turkeys came and flew over us and landed and the cat puffed up just completely. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're everywhere on our property. We see them usually in the evenings and um, yeah, they have a very unique shape. And what's weird is they have such small heads. It always feels wrong to draw their heads that small, but especially seeing it kind of flipped like yeah. this. It definitely looks right. The kestrel's a little too skinny, but I've got some more stuff too. Um, oh, those are cool. So, are you starting on those um, gestures on this on the on the sketches of the turkeys? Do you use the line in the back to get you started? I'll use the line in the back or the line in the front sometimes. Okay. Yeah, and I've also and those, got some those feel very very turkey. Yeah, then I've got some like sense of place stuff from Fremont's Peak, and then from just driving through Watsonville, and then the oak trees here are so different from what we have in Washington, um, where I usually am. That I kind of forgotten how unique those are, and that's where the black pen really works. I got a little brush pen, and that's so fun for drawing the live oaks because you can kind of just like squiggle around with it. Yeah, it has a very kind of sumi look to it. Yeah, yeah. There's oh, you are having fun peak. with oak trees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. They dance. Um, they really dance. And this, this just do. has the, the feeling of the, of the aliveness of the oak. Yeah. Uh, then you got some, my grandpa likes to feed the quail. So he has this army of quail that live <laughs> by our house. <laughs> got the goats and sheep on the farm and whatnot. Little kill deer. Uh, this is kind of just like a sense of place thing from uh, my family's house. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. And, and taping in or gluing in a few little found feathers. You've got yeah. red-shouldered hawk out there. Um, your Spot toey. Yeah. Oh. It's actually Eurasian collar dove, so they're not native, but they're kind of just everywhere now. Mm-hmm. This is and, really inspiring. Yeah, just some live sketches. My grandpa has some really ugly sheep. <laughs> They're kind of fun to draw. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah, oh, those are kind of fun. 
Oh, I love this sheep page. I love. <laughs> I'll this do more of those. I, I can just I can feel that yeah. animal. God. And this is from Elkhorn Slough. Got the curlew, the great egrets, and then just some like trying to do some sense of place stuff. Wow. What I do is actually bring a wait, wait, Hold on, yeah, go 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 oh. back one. Go back one. And folks, notice how that egret just pops off the page because of the dark adjacent to it. Um, if you had that egret with the shadows put on it without that dark, it mm -hmm. would feel like a dark bird. But because Kate then put dark in around it, you still get the feeling of the glowing white egret. Yeah. That's really cool. Let's see, I got the acorn woodpeckers. There's a kite. I need to go back over to class on um, drawing raptors because I just could not get it. But. Oh, this is so rich. Hold on, there's a, 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 I just heard a doorbell, my doorbell ring. Um, oh, and dear. someone's gonna be coming and, and meeting me in a moment. I am, I need to, to, to run and, and do that. Um, um, Evea, could you continue with this share? I, I want you to continue reading this. This is, this is really inspiring. These, these pages are, are just gold for us to look through. Oh, awesome, thank you. Absolutely. I was noticing earlier on your on your sheep page that you even had one of them making the Fleming response with its with yes. its lip up. Yeah, a lot of livestock will do that. I mean, um, I have some horses that I'm around a lot and always bring them weird smelling things and they just, you know, do their weird little smile thing. I love it. I, I think it's really cool that you caught it in such a dynamic position. And as yeah. And then your, for your hawk's page, I was also noticing that you'd begun to do like some shading under the wings and such so that you were capturing the negative shapes. That's a really good way yeah. to when something's overwhelming. And ooh. Yeah, I've just been trying to do a lot of stuff that really gets the shape of things and just kind of give myself permission to be really sort of fast and loose with it and just try and do a lot of like sense of place things and try and capture as much as I can and not get stuck on being kind of perfectionist because I know that that will come with time. Um, but for now, I mean, Definitely. Most of it's just trying to put in the pencil miles or the paint miles in this case. Uh, absolutely. I think that's the way to go. Out of curiosity, because because I'm looking at this page and then your other page on the wetlands and, and how much and how rich and full of detail they are. When you do these pages, where do you start? Um, usually for the landscapes, I'll do sort of the masses of land. Like for the bird one, I tried to get in like little values of where the light is and the water reflections. And then I came in and did all of the birds before I put paint on, just so I could use like the white contrast for all the egrets. Um, but I mean, elkhorns are so cool to get all these groups of birds that just kind of like hunker in these big flocks. And both the egrets and the cormorants have such fun shapes. Um, and elkhorn slew, that place is just amazing. Oh. You capture oh, the yeah. really well. I know, does anyone have any advice for when you go hiking with like your family and you want to sit and draw and then you're trying to like get in a painting as, they're like, okay, let's go. I mean, sister's great because she'll sit there for an hour with the bird scope and be perfectly happy, but um, yeah. One suggestion. This, oh, go ahead, Jack. Oh, no, no, this is, this is crazy. So for, uh, move it a little bit to the side so we can see the egret with its reflection, right? Okay, mind blown. That was, I took your um, class on reflections, which really made me think about that a lot more. That's and so then we've cool. got the but, but, and also the the one where you're out there at the slough with all of those different little little beastie shapes. Each yeah. one is just sort of identifiable as yeah, that was the idea. As as what it is. This is just so cool. This is, is, is doesn't this make you want to run out with your journal and get some biodiversity on? That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, some an well, artist who you might want to check out um, is hold on. I'm going to grab a book off my shelf that might be um, interesting to you. Yeah. Oh, another fun thing. I watched a. I put on nature documentaries for my cat when I can't take her out walking, and I watched this one on the Humboldt Current with her, and there was so much fun stuff for just like sketching as you go through. Um, that. Yeah. And there's really interesting stuff like whales looking at how they look underwater versus like this one was one of my favorite things I've done recently. Oh my gosh, my gosh, this is so inspiring. Yeah, and then uh, what else do I have? There's also, I took a little class um, online on how to paint water 
colored whales. And there's just some really neat stuff. Um, yeah. So oh. hopefully you get to go whale watching while I'm here in the Monterey Bay area too. Yes, yes. Um, Sanctuary Cruises is my favorite tour operator out of Moss Landing. I was um, going to go with my dad on a sailboat. But... <laughs> oh, even better. Even better. Yeah. Um, that's really, really, really fun. Um, let me just show you a quick book uh, that, 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 that page that you had that was um, the page that you had with all those, those little beasties on it reminded oh, yeah. me of the work of um, Michael Warren. Um, oh. and let me back up here. Oops. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to write his name. Um, and so uh, a lot of the stuff, this is, this is done with colored pencil, but these, just these little, these little drawings where you kind of get these critters in place where you have these different groups of things. Well, it's so cool because it shows you how things interact and how they move around and just looking yeah. at the food, my favorite thing is seeing like these groups of birds on this massive like salt marsh. Yes. And they all kind of interact in weird ways. I mean, like all the cormorants kind of like sit there and sun themselves and you got the egrets that are more actively hunting and the seagulls and the little flocks of birds that just move around. You kind of get the sense of place that's really brought in by having these different uh, groups of animals and where they stand, like in regard to like um, what kind of environment they like. Yep. And it's just so interesting to look at. Um. Let me see if I can find more. Just yeah, but these yeah, these, these just these little things where you're kind of uh, your your work reminded me of, of 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 Warren here. So I just thought that I would put this artist on your radar and see if there's more uh, just sort of things in relationship. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, really good. fun stuff. That yeah. journal was so inspiring. Thank you. Well, hopefully you. next time we see you, you've got some new stuff and you know, take it tide pooling this afternoon. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Hey, have a great time. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting me show my work. That was fun. All right. Um, we're going to bounce over to Heidi. Um, I'm going to have to uh, leave in just a, a, a moment. And um, before we do, I just wanted to, um, and, and, and Ivea, would you be okay with sort of continuing the discussion through and let, let folks share who have got other things to, to, to share with the group? Um, uh, so we are, we're going into, um, into this, this holiday season. Um, and I just want to remind folks about the um, th this this tool of nature journaling is going to allow you to take whatever moments you have and you get to choose the ones that you want to keep and save and curate those memories. And as you as you do, um, your life just becomes richer and more beautiful. Um, through making studies like we saw in Kate's journal there, it has a huge impact on our ability to remember, not just to, to pay attention in the moment and to sort of remember that later on. And it just sort of makes the fabric of our life so much richer. You can do this. The more you do it, the better it gets. So notice that Kate was putting in a bunch of pencil miles there. It's like Ray Bonto puts in a bunch of pencil miles and you see vividly the impact of that. Um, and as a present for yourself, this year, I'm gonna suggest that you carve out time to, for yourself to do those practices that give you strength and solace and connect you with the world. And um, I'm so happy to be part of this community with you. Um, be safe, be kind, and uh, you can do this. Let's go play in nature.
right? Um, there, um, I also want to, um, to, to thank you again for the work that you have been doing in um, helping steward this community and to take such good care of us. You are so kind, generous, thoughtful, gracious, and present. Um, you are an absolute gift to all of us. And thank you for your time, attention, and love. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for leading us in an amazing year. And it's hard to it's hard to believe that we started out this last year still in the pandemic. I mean, it's been almost two years now. Yeah. Um, so you've been being here for us for more than a year. Um, for almost two years, like on a weekly basis. And I think I can speak for a lot of people here that you have brought all of us together and also have given a lot of us the sort of rock and stability that we've needed throughout this time period. And for you to do that is incredibly generous of you. And just, it's a testament to your huge heart. And I'm so glad that so many of us get to celebrate this with you. And just thank you. <laughs> now I'm getting all tongue tied. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I am. I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to this community that has come together. Somehow we found each other and uh, we are sort of in this crazy time, sort of finding these moments to um, to inspire ourselves, those parts of ourselves that are really the best. I think the world needs that.